Honourable Michael Hogburn's next lot is fast approaching. But has he met his match in Dave? The Duke and auctioneer William Rouse lurk nearby to witness a meeting of minds. Can you tell me what you know about it? Um, it was given to me by a friend. I gave her, was about to give her some money and she says, Dave, look, just take it because I always, I make miniatures and, I, yeah. and um, she just said I could have it. So you, so you I go paint over, miniatures? No, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a miniaturist. I make miniature little bears. Oh, I love it. I make miniature little bears. So, Do I get that free because we're on TV um, together? No, I'm so sorry you don't. It's very miniature miniature, yes. isn't it? We'll leave him there to bring you good luck. Oh, OK. He might, you never know. Right, so, yeah, so I make miniature bears and tiny antique miniature toys. So yeah. we are talking, to boil it down, trading, bartering, getting a swap. Yes. She gave you that, you gave her a few miniatures. Correct, Correct. yeah. Love it, love it a lot. Well, let's go I'll for just... it. I'll tell you what we've got, OK? When we look on the back here, we've got it on panel. Nice mahogany panel, it's not a pine one, so that's even better. When we turn it over, we've got virtually the original frame, it's an ebonised frame. Okay. And I would say if I was dating this, it would be 1860, 1880. And you can normally tell that by the, the sort of the style of the painting and things mm. like that. And it's unsigned, which is a shame, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's you know, if you're going to do something, sign it. Now, William, small oval oil painting on board, continental, what do you think about it? I think it could be Austrian or German or that, certainly that part of the world, but uh, it's a good thing really. I think he should be putting a fairly good price on the table for it. The independent valuers, well they've gone in with a fairly modest estimation. Where are you going to be? Well I think 120, 180 would generate some interest. I think they're, they're in the same region. If that goes to auction, there's a reasonable chance that a private buyer will see that at good value for money at a couple of hundred quid. But Hoggy, he likes a picture. Let's see what he puts on the table. I'll tell you what I'd like to pay for it, and I'll tell you what I'm going to bid for we'll it. see if it works. I'm going to go for 20, 40, 60 pounds. My response to that is no way. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let's get a good way, then. What about 80 pounds? No way. Really? Really. Mm. I'll go 90. I really don't feel like I go much more. William, what do you think about the £90 offer? Well, it's not an unreasonable offer. I'm sure he can make a good profit, a really good profit at that, so maybe a tiny bit more wouldn't be un an unreasonable request. You've heard what William says. He thinks it's a reasonable offer. I think it's on the low side, and I need to get in there and tell our seller. I really don't feel like I go much more. Oh, David, I need you. You know, he's a mate of mine, Hoggy, and he, <laughs> he's a slow starter but he can get more money down when he wants to do, David. Okay. 100 to 150, 120 to 180 is where the independent valuers are placing it. I think it could do well at the auction, but, you know, it's a gamble. It depends who's there on the day. I'm right. going to say to you, get that <laughs> bought. There's profit in that, Hoggy. I see profit in that. Very charming subject matter. There you go. There's two P's in this game. Mm. There's profit and there's passion. Mm. And you need to have both of those to buy something. Right. Now, I've got the passion there, but I can't see the profit. OK. And if I pay more than 90 quid, I'm out of the running on that. OK, I'll go to auction. You're going to go to auction? I'm going to go to auction. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you very anyway. much. Bless you. <laughs> it's, the, it's the sort of thing I can buy at 90 quid all day long. You can make 30, 40 quid on it. And if it goes to auction, I see it doing 120, 140. So Hoggy thinks he's on the money. But both Davids think it'll fetch more. Let's find out who's right. 130. Now, Dave, you brought along a rather nice 19th century oval oil painting on a board of a young girl with a birdcage and a small bullfinch inside. The reserve is 130. Is it going to make it? I hope so. Here it is. And I've got a bid straight in. I'm bid 120. That's what we like to hear. 120. At 120, all done. Anybody else want to come in at 120 pounds? Then 120 it is. Would you accept 120? There's a bid at 120. Your reserve is 130. I can sell that for 120 if you want to sell it. Yes, we can. We, we, we've decided we will let it go at a cheap price at 120. Okay. 120 pounds under the gavel. We've got some commission to take off. 
just over 100 quid, 102 quid. That was the real deal. Real deal. The Duke and auctioneer Martin are standing by because this next item is a tricky one. You've brought me in, in this year of the dragon, you've brought me in a very pretty little Chinese vase. Yeah. Did you buy it? Is it yours? Yes, yes, I've had it over 20 years. Really? Where did you buy it, Trevor? I bought it in a... I think it was like a little sale, boot sale thing in about 20 years ago. Oh, and I see. So what made you buy it? Did you like it? It was the colours. It's it, all the different colours and the dragon. The enamelling. Yeah, and it just felt really nice because you could feel the outside's got like you could feel where it's been yes. painted on. Well, I think it's a very pretty little Chinese vase. It's 19th century. Uh, I think the enamelling is particularly nice. And it's interesting, underneath, you've got the six character letters. Yeah. Now, this is, this is telling us this is from a much earlier reign, but they just kept copying them. So this would be a couple of hundred years earlier, the mark, yeah. uh, than what it, this, when the vase was made, because the vase is 19th century. Now, Martin, when this first came through the door, I thought, wow, I saw it being turned over. Mm -hmm. I saw the character marks underneath. Right. And from a distance, I could see the mark of the Emperor Kang Shi, and I thought, oh, what have we got here? But on close inspection, it is not exactly what it seems to be, is it? I think you're quite correct. It's a nice thing, bottled bars, 18th century shape, Kang Shi marks, as you know, 1662, 1722. Uh, but often, the marks were in veneration of earlier rulers, and I think yes. that's what we've got here. So that's interesting. Just because you see early marks, doesn't necessarily mean you have found a prize. On the other hand, it might be a right one. Absolutely. It's also difficult for auctioneers because you could legitimately be handling a vase that's 100, 200 years old, but the marks are saying it's 400 years old. Right. Lucky for you, Chinese porcelain is doing very well at the moment. The enamelling's nice. It's the year of the dragon. You've got two dragons chasing a flaming pearl. Yeah. And that's a very typical Chinese style of decoration. You have a few problems here. You've got a crack and a chip. So do you want a lot of money for your vase, Trevor? Oh, a few bob? A bit, if I can. <laughs> well, I'll put some money on the table and see where we go. I'm not sure if I'll be able to buy your vase, but I'll, I'll give it a go. There's 20 pounds. There's 40 pounds. 60 pounds, Trevor. How do you feel about that? You're not looking very happy about no, that. No. No. If I make it 70 pounds, are we getting closer, Trevor? No. Not really. 70 pounds on the table. What do you think, Martin? It's probably not enough uh, at this market. Um, we're going out worldwide, globally, on the internet. It's worth a bit more. Okay. You heard what Martin said, I agree. I think there's potentiality there. I think it's worth more money and I need to tell our seller. Oh, do you think I have to dig a little bit deeper? Yeah. Here's David, he's going to give you some Let advice. try and help. Well, you've heard what Helen says. You, you have early character marks there, yeah. which makes it interesting, but it's still 19th century. Nevertheless, it's an interesting vase and because of the Chinese marketplace at the moment, because of the interest, even in 19th century export wares, I'm going to say there's a reasonable chance at auction, but I'll tell you what they say. They say 100 to 150, 150 to 250. Unless you get more, I'm going to say that probably, because of the character marks, is worth a gamble. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, Trevor, you've heard David's advice. What do you think of David's advice? Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think... Do you want me to tempt you a little bit more? But it will be a little bit more, and then... I'll put my final offer on the table and then I'll leave it with you. Uh, I'm going to put 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 pounds on the table. That's me finished. Yeah. So you can go to auction and maybe attract an internet buyer. But there's money on the table. So that's 90 pounds. What are you going to do, Trevor? I'll go to auction. Mm. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. And have yeah. a nice day out with David. Yeah. Well, are you going to tell me how much you paid for it? I, I paid a pound for it. Ninety pounds turned down. What do you think, Martin? Can we do better in your auction, even after that commission has been deducted? Well, no pressure there then. Um, if it was mine, I'd send it to auction. Okay. I think it's the right way to go. I think there's a reasonable chance of doing much better 
at auction. Well, I think it could make a bit more, and it's the year of the dragon, and why not? Somebody might want it, or some Chinese buyer might come in and say, I'll have it, pay a little bit more. A few minutes ago, David advised Trevor to turn down Helen's offer of £90 for his Chinese vase. But will there be a willing buyer for it in the sale room? You turn down 90 quid, you decide, I'm going to gamble, I'm going <laughs> to go to auction, I'm going to see if we can get a little bit more money. The estimation starts at 100 to 250, and the reserve is 100 quid. Has Trevor done the right thing? Is it going to pay dividends? or is he going to miss out? Here it is now. Which is the Chinese porcelain bottle vase in earlier style being shown to you now. Tell me where you see it. Where do you want to be? 150? 150 pounds for it? 100 pounds for it, surely? Well, I'll start with me 50. 50 bid, thank you. 5, 60, 5, 70, 5. That's 75 pounds and I have. Worth a bit more, I would have thought. At 75 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. 75 pounds all I made here today at 75. Looking around me at 75 then. All done at 75. Last chance at the money. Well, I'm afraid not quite. No, so I'm instructions there, so uh, casualty there, I'm afraid. The the has just gone down, Trevor, at £75. Didn't get to the reserve of £100. What's your feelings? I know it only costs a quid. Well, I had a day out and got to meet you, and uh, it's all it's interesting all stuff. Yeah. OK. Real deal, £90, Helen. OK. You were on the cash, girl. She was right. John, you brought a little uh, Worcester plaque here. Yeah. Worcester, Royal Worcester. Tell me something about this. Well, I used to collect Worcester. Well, I don't collect it now. I haven't collected for 10 years or more. You know, and the uh, sons don't want to collect antiques, so no, you know, no. I just thought I'd sell some stuff. I like Worcester. I particularly like the plaques they make. And this is by a very well-known artist, uh, Stinton. Yeah, one of the Stinton. Yes. Let me just have a little look at the back stamp on it. Well, there it is, the Worcester mark, and of course you can date it to the exact year, of course, can't you? These I don't Worcester know marks. the year, I haven't uh, worked Well, this will be between 1925 and 1930. Uh, yes, yeah, very nice indeed. So, John, how much would you like for this uh, Worcester plaque? Uh, well, as much as you want. <laughs> as much as possible. as possible, if you well, can. That's, but, that's, uh... that's what they all say. <laughs> you don't want 50 quid, do you? No. I knew you didn't. <laughs> 100 sounds more exciting, doesn't it? Uh, not really. I think it's worth a lot more than 100. Is it? Yeah. I've lost touch what they're worth these things these days. Uh, well, the I market's think... been a bit up and down, hasn't it? Oh, I think Worcester will always sell. What about £150, John? Nah. Aren't I getting close here? Uh, not really. <laughs> thought it was. <laughs> I don't fancy it for a lot more than that. 170 No? No. No, we're in there. 190 no, you know we're near. 200. You're still a good way off. Am know? I really? Yeah. Here's some advice. Well, um, what we've got here is something which is desirable. 250 to 350, our independent values and auctioneers see the same. I think you'll out that on your very fashionable stall. <laughs> He has market stalls all <laughs> over at these Brocanti fairs. <laughs> and he's there, dappered up, mm. like this. Oh, and yeah. all the ladies come in, Dave, what have you got? <laughs> I've got this, I've got the Stinton, yeah. I've got that. And bang, he's got it sold. Oh, marvellous. You know, he's got those eyes. And, uh, you know, he's got the gift of the gab. You oh. have that away, easy. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, tell him to put some more money down. Uh, well, John, um, he's taught me to give me a bit more. I wasn't going to. I'd want to give you 200 30 pounds, and that's what I'd want to give. So, if you'd rather take it to auction, I'm not offended. That's your final offer. And you're going to say no? No. <laughs> John, you're going to auction? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Well, I do like a bit of Royal Worcester, and I'm amazed I didn't buy it. I wanted more for it, uh, and I think it's worth about 300, I would have thought. Will John manage to get his £300 at auction? Let's find out as his Royal Worcester goes under the gavel of auctioneer Richard Winterton. Where did it come from? Uh, I bought it um, at an antique shop uh, quite a few years ago, about 15. Do you know what you paid 15 years ago? I think it was about 250 It is here in the auction. The range is 280 to 300 and the reserve is 280 
It's coming up now. Are they going to go for it? Now we come to the Royal Worcester uh, Oval Plat there. Uh, signed by James Stinton. A lot of interest on it. A lot of interest. 200 to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60, 260, 270, 280, 290, 300. 300 Plus pounds. That's the like our reserve. Uh, 300. 300 pounds. Done at three. Sold then at 300. OK, 300 pounds. Now there's some commission to take off there. 255 quid. Are you satisfied or are you disappointed? Uh, a little bit disappointed, but, you know, that's the way it goes. And John would have liked to have seen a little bit more, but that's the market, and it's found its level here in the sale room. That's the real deal. Alistair, thanks so much for coming on the show. Oh, very nice to meet you, Debbie. Are you enjoying your day? Having a wonderful day. Good, good, good. Tell me about this box. Well, this box here was a wedding present from a mother and father from the gun room of his turret on HMS Exeter, which was commissioned in 1931. Right. Plymouth. And that's exactly the year of the hallmark. Well, they got married in December 1931. Right. So everything marries up in that sense. And on the top, you say, these are all the... These are the signatures of all the people on the, in the turrets, gun turrets, on HMS Exeter. They all came along to his wedding and they all signed on oh, the top remarkable. of the... Remarkable. Amazing. Amazing. I love that side of it. But if I'm being brutal... Yes. My comment would be, it looks as though it has been then in the wars. It's covered in dents. Yes. I don't think there's one corner that's not been knocked in. Yes. Its condition is a problem. Yes. And unfortunately, although it has its story, as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at a scrap item. Yes. So I'm going to be offering you the scrap price for it. Do feel free to say no, but uh, that's where I see it yes. at, Alistair. So, 10, 20, 30 pounds. What do you feel about that? Just before you answer that, Alistair, yes. I think what we've got here is rather interesting, a piece of silver. It dates from the 1930s. I'm going to say £30, not enough. 100 to 150 was the estimation. Military collectors may desire that even more than the silver content. Go to auction. It would have been lovely to have maybe the boat's name across the front. Yeah. The military aspect of it doesn't really come across no. unless, like yourself, you're directly related to the box in that sense. Yes. So, Alistair, this is my final offer, £30. Yes. I know it's a bit mean. Have you decided what you want yes. to do? I'm going to want to go to auction, OK, please. well, look, have a great day out. Thank you very and much indeed so much for your for time. The offer was £30, which wasn't enough. I think it'll bring great pleasure to a military historian. Anchors away, Alistair. Let's see if those military collectors are in the room. Why are you selling it today? You, you're obviously a collector, you've got lots of things. Well, the thing is, we have so little space in the house and my wife is making me clear things out at okay. the moment. On the day, Debbie, our dear, offered you 30 quid. Ridiculous offer. It's here in the sale room. Let's see what it brings. Moving now to lot 380, the table cigarette casket there. All engraved with the uh, signatures on the top. I'm in at 100. At 100 pounds, I'm bid 100, 110. At 110, I'm bid 110, 120. At 120, I'm bid at 120, 120. And sold then at 120. The gambler's just gone down at 120 pounds. Take away the commission, it's just over 100 pounds, 102 pounds. Satisfied or disappointed? Very satisfied. Very okay. satisfied. Very fair indeed. You've heard what Alistair said. He was satisfied on the day. He's taking home £102, and that was the real deal. Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. All this week, we are celebrating Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee. 60 fantastic years. Mom.
Next on Lady Alison Chapman's table is a force to be reckoned with in the form of mother and daughter duo Lillian and Amanda. These are your silver plated serviette rings. So what, what makes them special? Well, we know they're White Star. OK, so White Star, they own Titanic. But these aren't Titanic. Mm -hmm. I so wish they were, because it would make them ten times easier to sell on. <laughs> they are what they are. They're a White Star, star line, silver plated napkin ring. Mm -hmm. So how did you come by them? Well, we had a brownie jumble sale. And at the end of the sale, you know, all the rubbish, and they were going to go into the bin because they were black, and they were all tied together with postman string. So I thought I'd clean them up and have a dinner party. They went into a drawer and they stayed there for about 45 years. Did they? Do you know anyone that uses serviette rings nowadays? Probably the Queen. The Queen yes, would, wouldn't she? Would, Definitely. Yes. So I'll put her on my potential <laughs> client list. But anyway, let's put my money on the table. Ten pounds. That's a good starter. <laughs> Is that for one? No. You don't really want the Allison, do you? Yeah, you've read me very well. <laughs> if they were silver, I'd be like delving deep. Let's call it fifteen then. I don't see them at fasting more than that. I'm ever so sorry, Lillian. Where do you see them at? A lot more than that, I'm afraid. Do you? Yeah. So do you think you ought to go to auction with them? Would you go to auction if you were me? Not with silver-plated serviette rings, I wouldn't, but it depends if they can promote... It's the history, isn't it? Well, what history do they have? They were made by the White... or they were used by the White Star Line and they happen to have a ship called Titanic that sank. You've got no romance in your soul. Yes. I have so much romance, it pulls out of me. It's but a not glamorous over time. The it was a glamorous time. time and and in that time, there were many glamorous things made. But I am listening to your story, and I fooled for your story to the tune of £15. So what would you like to do, Lillian? I think we'd go to auction, yes? yes. Off to auction. Have you ever been to auction? No. You'll have a lot of fun. It means you can spend time with David, and I hope you do well with them there. Thank you ever so much, Lillian. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, Amanda. Nice Thank you. Dear, Alison wasn't impressed by the silver star serviette rings, was she? Hopefully there'll be some buyers at the auction who'll love them. Let's find out as they go under the gavel of auctioneer William Rouse. You brought along something rather interesting. You brought along five Elkington silver-plated napkin rings. Now, Alison said, I will give you £15 for your silver-plated uh, rings, which would have made a nice profit, but you turned her down. <laughs> The reserve is 40 quid. Dare I say it, are they going to sink in the sale room or are they going to sail? Let's find out. They're coming up now. £20 then to go. 20 I bid everywhere. 22, 25, 28, 30, 32, 35, 38, 40. Got on the money, 42, 45. It's amazing what this White Star connection does. 60, 65, 65 pounds here. At 65, they're going. OK, £65 under the gavel, a very good result. Take away the commission and you're going home with £55. Any idea what you're going to do with the money? I think we'll have a meal out. So OK. <laughs> it sounds like the girls, mother and daughter, are going to have a nice meal out with their 55 quid, and that was the real deal. So, tell me about this one. Yes, well, this one's quite interesting. It was, um made for the Festival of Britain in 1951. Um, and then, unfortunately, the king died, George VI, and they decided to um, use them as the coronation coach for Queen Elizabeth II. And what are they made out of? Lead. They're all lead toys. Mm. So why are you selling them? I've had them, I've enjoyed them, and um, I like to buy things as well, so... It just I need allows a bit you... Of to have more capital. play money. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I have almost a fanatical market for royal things, and that market is Japan. And I'm perfectly sure that with this being the special year for our Queen, mm. um, that will have a great influence on these prices it will. as well. 
So let's have a play, Sarah, shall we? Oh, OK. I've listened intently to what you've got to say. So, I've got £100. 150 200 300 pounds that's a very kind offer but i know that they are worth more than that because i like to have a like a gamble <laughs> and i'm a very much a, a royalist at heart those 400 and 50 pounds no i'm sorry okay so it's off to auction yep I it's been so. a pleasure, Sarah. It's been lovely to A meet. real pleasure. Thank you very All right. much. Thank and you. I've learnt something today. So thank Good. you for that. All right, thank you. She did make me a very good offer, but I knew that, in fact, they were worth um, more than the offer and I wanted to make sure that I could get the best price I could for them. We had a good chat about it, and unfortunately I couldn't accept the offer, but it was very enjoyable anyway. Alison may have offered over the odds, but Sarah's not budging. So the coach and horses canter off to the sale room. Sarah brought along two rather interesting items, a British state coach and horses, and also another a boxed Leslie products state coach. Together, she was offered £450 by Alison Chapman. She turned that down. I thought it was a really good offer. She decides to gamble and put it into the auction. She can't make it today. I'm looking after her interests. The auctioneer has split the lots. The first one has a 250 reserve, and the second lot has a 350 reserve. I think the estimates are a bit too high, but let's see what happens. £100 the lot. £100 I bid. £110, £120, £130, £140. £140. At £140 for that state coach, £140. £140. It did not sell the first one. It got up to £140. The next one has a reserve of £350. Even worse. £200 for it. Anybody want it for £200? I'm, I'll, or I'll pass the lot. No interest for £200. I think these reserves are far too or ambitious. I'll pass the lot. No interest for £200. No interest, sorry. As you can see, there was no interest in the room. They didn't sell. I am amazed, actually, that Sarah didn't take the £450 that was offered on the day by Alison Chapman. Alison, fantastic bid. Congratulations to you. Sadly, Sarah didn't take that on the day and they didn't sell in the sale room. But the real deal was with Alison Chapman. Tell me about your carpets, rugs. Well, they were bought in Abu Dhabi. Right. My sister lived out there for a while. But she moved back about two years ago, two to two and a half years ago. Yeah. And the house that she's in now, there's no space for display. No. So she's just got them rolled up. Sad. In really, a corner isn't it? somewhere. Really? Yes. You see, in Abu Dhabi, in a house out there, they would sit quite well, wouldn't they, on the walls? Yeah, because it would fit the into that houses environment, are really. quite massive. You yeah, see. absolutely. And this down here, this is signed. Yeah, they're all signed. They're all signed. All of them, and there's yes. seven, let's not yeah. get it wrong, there's a few not on here. So yes. it's seven rugs and you're selling them as one lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a package. This says buy me cheap in English. Is it? No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak I don't speak Arabic, I'm afraid. This is Arabic and it says Michael can have these cheap because I like him. No, I don't nah, say that. Does it? It no, it doesn't. Are you expecting lots of money for these? I'm sure they cost you lots. Oh, yeah, they did. How much did you pay for all of them? Um, one of them, I think that the, the biggest one was, oh, about a thousand pounds. I can believe that. Because of the quality of these, and because of the potential they would have in a sale room, and because they're so young, I really don't think I can make you an offer on it. It's, it's not my area of expertise, to be honest with you, and I just think you'd make a lot more money out of these seven rugs by taking them to auction. I mean, let's see what David says. Well, I've just heard what Michael has said, and, and I think I agree, because what we haven't got amongst our experts on the programme, we haven't got a rug specialist. And so I'm saying it's in your best interest yeah. if we go to the sale room, let a specialist rug expert within the sale room complex uh, catalog these individually will maximize the best price we can get the auctioneer is saying somewhere 
in that two to three thousand pound range for seven rugs. I think that's realistic. Yeah. And I think what we should do is get to the option, maximise your price, and then you'll be going home with a nice few quid. Thank you, David. That was such sound advice, wasn't it, really? Because, like you yeah. said, you know, once it gets to the auction, they will catalogue them properly and the buyers will be there looking at them. Okay. So auction it is. Yes. Have auction you been to auction before? No. Wow, you're in for a surprise. I am. Seven lots of paradise. Nice to meet you. Thanks Thank for coming on. Thank you very on. much. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, you sat down on the dealer's day with Michael Hogburn, uh, and Michael said, "Look, I don't really understand these. I can see they're good quality, but they're not really my cup of tea. I suggest you go to the auction." Yes. They're split into seven lots. The first lot is coming up now. Let's see what they do. Here it is now, the first lot. Uh, start this, start me 400 pounds for it. 400, 420, 440. Here at 460, 480, 500, and 50, 600, and 50, 700, 700 pounds, 750. Yes, 800, 800 pounds then on the phone. with the air at 800, anybody else wants to come in? 800 pounds. Okay, the first one's made £800. A very good start. Start me £400 a lot. £400 I bid downstairs. For 20, for 40, for 60, for 80, 500, and 50. £600 for the lady. You want 650 upstairs? 650, 700, 750, 800. 850. 850 on the telephone. There are bids in the room here. There are carpet professional dealers everywhere. 900 down below. 950. You want a thousand pounds? A thousand pounds. 1100 is the next bid. At a thousand pounds, 1100. 1200. 1200 pounds down below it is at 1200. Anybody else want to come in? That's it. 1200. A great start. First one brought £800, the second rug brought £1,200. Lot 13, there we go, start me this one, £500 to go. Fi 500, I'm in here, 500. And 50, 600, and 50, 700, and 50, 800, and 50, 900, and 50, 950 there, £1,000. All right, 1,050, 1,100 upstairs. 1150. Very similar to the, to the last lot, which brought 1200. 1200. 1250. 1200. You all done? 1250. 1250 pounds. Let's go to the fourth lot. 400 pounds for this one. 400 I'm bid. 420. 420. 440. In the room at 440. This one a bit underestimate. 440. OK, that's four rugs sold. We're going to the fifth rug now. Uh, start with this one, £400 for this. I bid 400 420 440 there. 460 upstairs, 480 500 550 600 £600. Pounds. Telephone bidder against the room there. here. All right, 620 650 upstairs. 650 it is then upstairs. Anybody else? 650 We're now going into 15 a This is the sixth rug. So this one, start me, this one, £400 for this. And bid 420, I'll take 400 pounds. You're 420 upstairs. 420, 440, 460, 480, 500, 50, 600, 750, 700, 700, yet 750, 800, 50, 900, 900 pounds, 950, 1000 pounds, 1100, 1200. They're going for this one, the big one. 1300. £1,300 then. Great result. £1,300. One, two, three, four, five, six rugs have sold. Um, and we're coming up to the last rug now. Start me this one. Start me £400 to go. £400 I bid and 20 I'll take upstairs. For 20, for 40, for 60, for 80, 500, and 50, 600, and 50, 700, and 50, 800, and 50, 900, and 50. £1,000. All right, uh, 1050 Where's Where is 1050 on the last row now? 1100 1150 1200 At £1,200. Hands everywhere in the room. Telephone bidder. 1250 £1,300. £1,350. £1,350 down below. £1,350. At £1,350, I'm going to sell it. The 
final rug has just gone down at £1,350. What's your first reaction? Oh, my first reaction. Are you pleased? I am so pleased. Really? I am very pleased. Very pleased with that. On the day in the sale room, there's been a lot of excitement. There's been a lot of competition. The total for your seven rugs is £6,990. So it's just a fraction under £7,000. We have to take away 15%, and that's going to leave you with something near to 5950 just a little bit less than that. Happy? Happy. Very happy. Delighted. And that is the real deal. Right, now, Leona, you've bought in these fish bars. What can you tell me about it? Um, my granddad's had it in his cupboard for a very long time and he thought it would be interesting. And it is quite interesting. Do you know anything else about it, about who made it or anything like that? No. What about you, Rudy? Do you know much more about it? Well, I know it's the Claris Cliff. Um, I bought it with a, a collection. So was it a big collection or was it...? There's, there's about 30 pieces to the collection, but they're not all in that good condition. It's a little bit unusual, this. I mean, yeah. when people talk about Clarice Cliff, they sort of normally imagine the, the bizarre range, mm. and I think the sort of very highly coloured sort of deco plates with the balloons and the different Quite, colours yeah, on. Yeah. This is yeah. a wee bit later, isn't it? I, think I, I, I don't know. I think this is a little bit later on. If we turn it over, we can just make out that it's got a little... Can you see that impressed mark yeah. there, Leone? And that says Clarice Cliff. And that is a name that immediately people will recognise, of course. So, do you like it, Leone? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to keep it? Mm -hmm. It's not really my kind of thought, but I like it. And what would you do with the money if you sold um, it? Um, give me and my mum and sister and dad planning to go to Florida, so use the money for Florida. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> so, you're going to go to Florida on, on the proceeds of Granddad's fish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'd probably That's come with right. us. Right, well, I, I shall try and contribute towards the cost of going to Florida. I'm not fast sure how far you'll get on what I'm offering, but I would pay you for your fish 20, 30 pounds. Mm. She doesn't look terribly impressed, does she? No, no. <laughs> what about you, Rudy? What's your gut reaction? Um, well, considering it's quite an interesting piece, as you've already said, um, I'd expect a bit more than that. A little bit more. What about if I went another five pounds and said 35 pounds? No, not really. No, not impressed. <laughs> well, let me try once more. Let me take that away and I'll put down another 20 and I'll say 40 pounds. What's your gut reaction, Leonie? What do you think um... you should do? I'm obviously quite young. I think it is quite a lot, so I would take it as a yes. <laughs> but as you said, you're quite young, and I think Rudy might have to decide to make sure that he thinks he can't get a bit more in auction. Mm. Would you like a day of the auctions? I'm quite happy with it, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go to the auctions. Go on, let me tempt you a little bit more. I said it was my final offer, but go on, £45. Mm. That is my final offer. What's your decision, Rudy and Leone? Good auction. Auction. Auction it is, then. I hope you do very well in auction, and I hope you make lots of money towards your adventure in Florida. And thank you both very much for coming in today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to the holiday, so let's hope we'll get more money. But have you and Grandad made the right decision, Leone? They're joining the Duke in the sale room where auctioneer Martin Lambert is angling to get them a better deal. We all know about Claridge Cliff. Everyone likes it. It's still very, very popular. 60 to 80 pounds is the estimation here in the sale room. Has Grandad made the right decision? Well, I think he has. Let's find out by looking over at the auctioneer now and see what happens. Uh, you tell me where you want to be. £80 is it 80? £50 then? I would have thought quite an unusual one. I have 30 here. Still no money. At £30 then, your turn if you will. At 35 40 now if you will. At £35 then. £35 for the Clarence Cliff. 40 45 Back in, sir. £50. Still a rare, rare. Oh, it's at the reserve. At 50 then. Bids on me left at £50. And we're done. We're happy you all done at £50 only. At 50 I sell. So the gamble has just gone down at £50. Well, that's good news in some ways. 
but there is a commission to take off. It's just under £43. Now, you turned down £45 from Simon. You took the gamble. You thought it was worth the risk, and I think it was. But on the day, it didn't quite make it. Are you a bit disappointed? Not really, no, because um, we've had a chance to have a nice day out. OK. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Coming to the sale room? Yeah. You see, it's a good experience. You come to the sale room on Dickinson's Real Deal, you'll really enjoy it. You're going home with about 43 quid, and that is the real deal.